When the clock says eight, don't be late. Time to meander again. Come and gather round. Help me check this sound. Time to meander again. Meander, la 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 la. Meander, la 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 la. As we call your name, we're so glad you came. Time to meander again. Thanks, Dee Dee. We hope to bring you cheer. You are welcome here. Time to meander again. Meander, la 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 la. 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 Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Monday Meander. We got. Mini mom back here on the couch and she's taking a role for people who aren't in the chat room. So hi, Nancy. Welcome over there in Arrington. Hi, Julie up in Lexington, Kentucky. We're glad you're here tonight. And everybody who's in the chat room, Dee Dee likes my tie and my shirt. And uh, Russ is in here in the room tonight, a, a recent Larry Norman fan. I'm glad to hear that. Cheryl is in the room tonight. Thanks for the compliments. Uh, I'm glad y'all like the Come Thou Found arrangement. Jessica is here tonight from down in Georgia. Pat and Gayla Dysher over in Odin, Indiana. Also big Larry Norman fans. I know that for a fact. Dale's here from out in Nevada. And I guarantee you Soraya will be here sooner or later. Yep, I said hi to Russ. Audrey's here over in Bristol, Tennessee. Hi, Audrey. Good to see you. Sharon Price is hitting mom's phone up over here, so that's good. Welcome, Sharon. Also up in Lexington, Kentucky. And um, Cheryl's down in South Carolina. I didn't mention that, but this is cool. Cool to have you guys here in the room tonight. We have 15 people signed in, and uh, we've had more people here since we went to YouTube, which is great. Wonderful. Cynthia Smith's here. She just came in. And Martha. Martha is here from Banner Elk, North Carolina. Cynthia's in yeah, Cynthia's up Ohio. near Columbus. So from all over this great nation of ours, we have gathered tonight for another Monday Meander. And I'm going to go ahead and bring Tommy on. I think right. I've said everything needs Sue to be Keys said. Is here. Sue, Sue, Sue Keys is in the house tonight. Hi, Sue. Welcome. That's Audrey's mom, by the way, in case you don't know. And are you ready? I'm ready. Let's all go. right. Give him a hand. Tommy Oaks, ladies right. and gentlemen. All right. Okay, I'm going to move our little sound check thing here. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Monday Meander. It's good to see all of you again, and good to have you here. I want to start with a with a couple of a, a very important prayer requests. Not that any prayer request is unimportant, but some very important prayer requests uh, that I'd like for you to uh, ask you to be praying for. First of all, some of you there, uh, this is a... Uh, this will touch you very easily because some of you there know our good buddy, Joey Potter. And Joey is facing uh, in the, the weeks to come some surgery. He has a, a what may be a cancerous melanoma on his nose. And um, that, it, that that's a little creepy, a little scary. And Joey's praying to be delivered from any fear and that God would be glorified. Joey also has had some issues with his heart. And one doctor has recommended that he have some stents put in his heart. So Joey's health is not what it needs to be. And would you join me in just praying that the Lord would heal Joey Potter and that none of this stuff would have to be done. So uh, I've, I've been praying that he would just be surprised and that the medical profession would be surprised at the good things that have happened to Joey in Jesus' name. So God bless Joey Potter, yes? All right. Also, uh, would you pray for some of you there in the in the list there have met and know and love and appreciate our good buddy, Scott Shipman. Most everybody who's in our mailing list will get an email. You haven't sent that out yet, have you, John Boy? To either tonight or tomorrow, John Thomas will be sending out an email about Scott. And uh, he he is going through a difficult time, too. 
this week will be a real trial and a test for Scott Shipman and uh, his family. And so uh, I, I hope you will join me in praying. Now, if you want any details in our email, we'll send Scott's uh, phone number to you. And I think most everybody here gets those emails anyway. But if you have any questions at all you want to ask Scott, feel free to call him. His life is an open book and you'll just enjoy talking to him anyway. So pray for Scott, pray for Joey. Let me just have a moment of prayer right now. Would you please join me? Father in heaven, all of us would like to join together. And I believe everybody here, if we were in a room together, they, they would certainly let it be known that they agree. We pray for Joey first. And Lord, we ask for healing for him. And now we pray for Scott and for all of his family. And we pray for strength, courage, just that you would guide and direct their steps. Help, help, help them, Lord, and help us tonight. We're thankful for everybody this year, and we pray that this meander would be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, thank you. I don't know, have you ever heard uh, my little story about the zoo and the jungle? In case you haven't, I'll give you a Reader's Digest version of this story, which uh, simply says that not too far from here, there is a path, and that path will lead you to the zoo or the jungle. Now, I don't say the zoo and the jungle because at some point you have to choose which place you're going to go to. So you will walk down that path a little ways, and you will come to a sign pointing one way that says to the zoo and pointing another way that says to the jungle. Now, underneath that sign, you might find a little bit of information about your destination, but it'll be sketchy. But let me just give you an idea of what you might find if you go down that trail. Now, if you go down the trail uh, to the zoo or, or the jungle, uh, what you may encounter is uh, the lion. There is a lion in the zoo and there's a lion in the jungle. Now, if you pick the zoo, you will for sure get to see the line. You, you, you can see the line. And the reason you can see the line is there in the zoo, he lives in a cage. Now, if you go to the jungle, there is no promise that you will see the lion. Because the lion lives in the jungle, he's not caged up, and he may show up or he may not show up. And he could be anywhere. All right. Now, if you go to the zoo, maybe the lion will growl. Uh, you can come up to his cage. You get you can get pretty close to him. Probably get within arm's reach of him. And if you wanted to be real risky, you might reach up there and touch him or something through those bars. But usually, the lion is so far you can't you can't touch him in those kind of settings. There's usually a distance for your protection. And that cage will probably protect you. So even if the line, as a matter of fact, you may want the line to roar. It's always kind of a little thrill if you go in there and the line roars, right? So you might get a little thrill of hearing the line roar. Now, if you encounter in the, the line in the jungle, maybe he'll roar. Maybe he'll growl. Maybe he will just surprise you and leap out in front of you. What will you do? Well, if you're at the cage and the lion roars, you might jump a little bit and you might say, well, let's see if we can't do something to make him do it again. If you're in the jungle and the lion roars, you may tremble in your boots. It may send you running. I don't know, climbing a tree. I don't know what. Now, if you encounter, you go to the cage where the lion is in the zoo, it is as safe as it can be. You'll be perfectly safe. You won't get scratched. You won't get bit. You, you can walk around there. You can take photographs and uh, maybe uh, buy a souvenir in the shop, a teeny little line or something to wear around your neck. Now, if you encounter the line in the jungle, there are no guarantees. Maybe you'll be safe. Maybe you won't. You might get scratched. You, you might lose a limb. You might even be killed. 
Now, if you go to the zoo, you'll come out unscathed. If you go to the jungle, again, there are no guarantees. So, where would you like to go? To the zoo or to the jungle? Would you like to meet the zoo lion or would you like to meet the jungle lion? Well, in my opinion, for a little while here, we've been kind of skirting around the jungle a little bit because we have been talking about a little bit of a scary subject, that being the wrath of God. Now, God is a God of love, but God is also a God of wrath. And although God loves, God also hates and John Thomas has been working on a little song about how that God hates. And I think he has finally finished that song, hasn't he? And so tonight we're going to premiere on this place, on the Monday Meander, the first completed uh, performance of John Thomas's new song, God Hates. So go John Thomas. I'm excited because I've never written a song in real time with people watching for so this has been fun thank you for letting me do this so here's the the first final draft of god hates for you guys to enjoy god is a god of boundless love he so loved the soul that he gave his only begotten son to save us from the fall his love is undying unending there's no place his love cannot go. But as much as he loves us, as much as he cares, there is something you may not yet know. Did you know that God hates? There are things that God hates. Might be hard to swallow. Perhaps you never knew. that God hates. He tells us in the Bible. So we know it's true. Doodly do, scroodly do. Yes, there are things that God hates. Many things that God hates. I kind of hate to tell you, but it's time you heard. once he tells us all the things that God hates in his holy word. Maybe you think we're crazy. Maybe you think there's something we might have missed. But it's right there in the Bible several times. And here is a sample list. Haughty eyes, a tongue that lies and ties the truth in knots. A hand that kills, a mind that fills the heart with evil plots. A path that's bent and feet that sprint along that wicked path. Troublemakers, promise breakers, fill the Lord with wrath. Anyone who sows dissension better learn to pay attention, especially one who breaks up friends. This is where God's patience ends. Now you know that God hates lots of things that God hates. It should be very obvious. We should hate the two. Yes, God hates. What are you going to do when you find a thing that God hates? Deep inside of you, it should make you blue. I hope we've given you a clue. When you find the thing that God hates, ask yourself what you're gonna do. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? There you go. Thank you, John Thomas. Okay, now, uh, you know, when that song is kind of tongue-in-cheek, but underneath is a very serious subject. It really is serious. 
that uh, God does love, but God also, the flip side of God's love is God's hatred. And that list, even though it's done kind of in a fun style, that list is taken right out of the Bible. If you want to check it out, it's in Proverbs chapter 6 of seven things that God hates. Now, there are other things that God hates, and there are things that God calls his people to hate. There are things that God loves and God tells us to love. And while love is a premier Christian virtue, there are also things that God does not want us to love. And so we're going to be looking at those things, but I still want to meditate a little more about God's hate and God's wrath. Now, the ultimate wrath of God is is coming, by the way. And I read about that last week, but I want to reread that again. You find in the sixth chapter of the Revelation, beginning at verse 12, I just want you to listen to something that's coming, all right? I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell under the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Run to the rocks. Rocks, won't you hide me all on that day? That's a, that's a creepy day. Uh, and it is a real day that will come. Ultimately, the wrath of God is coming. And that's why we need to flee the wrath to come. There is a call in the Bible to flee the wrath to come. Now, at the same time, as there being ultimate coming wrath, there's present wrath of God that is exhibited in our world every day. And last week, I introduced one passage of Scripture that talks about God's wrath being revealed from heaven. And I think this is a thing that reveals itself every day somewhere in our world, maybe in your own life. And so I, I, I asked everybody last week to read chapter one of Romans and just see if you could kind of follow the thought patterns of the flow of things or see what, see what you found in there. And who was it earlier wrote a note, said they forgot to email. Was that DD? Well, DD, all is forgiven. And uh, you didn't have to write me a letter. I just wanted to, wanted you and others to read those verses and I, I, I did a little bit of marking last week, marked some of the prepositions like the fours and the becauses, and uh, just to notice how the argument goes. Now, I happen to know that my own family members here at the house did, did that. So I'm going to ask, uh, well, since John Thomas is real close, uh, I'm going to ask him to come up and just share some of his research with us. And then I'm going to ask Minnie Mom back there, who is, uh, who, who, Always, she always, there she is in the palm of my hand again. She always does her assignments, and she has done her assignment too. So, John Thomas, you want to come and give a report? And we'll have Minnie Mom come and give her report. Well, I need to turn the high-tech alert on. All right, John Thomas, turning the tech alert on. Yeah, got to have that banner on there. This was fun. I pulled out my Sharpies, with uh, my Sharpie highlighters, which is always fun. But... I don't know that I found anything different from what you came up with last week, but I thought I'd just show my my musings and talk about the connections I made. So there's there's my sharpied page. And uh, the one word that really stood out to me this week, I'll fold it over so I can hold it up close, was uh, proud. And I did it in... Uh, six rainbow colors because of the pride flag. And uh, I just think it's interesting. Uh, Doug, Douglas Wilson calls it the goeth before a fall flag, which I think is cute. But anyway, I, I started with the fours. You know, last week you highlighted the fours. And I 
for the wrath of God is revealed. And what is it revealed against? It's revealed against ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. So the object of this sentence would be men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. So this is aimed at people who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Even though it says, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. And then it goes on, I highlighted attributes because it says what his attributes are, which are his eternal power and Godhead. And so that was a connection. And then it says what followed then were that they did not glorify God, nor were they thankful, but they became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. And it goes on to say the different things that resulted from that. And then there's another, therefore, which is like another level to what happened is that God gave them up. And there's three places in there I highlighted with blue um, starting right here. God gave them up. God gave them up and God gave them up. He gave them up to all sorts of horrible things like uncleanness, vile passions, debased mind. This is a big, long list of things. And the sad part is at the very end where it says in verse 32, knowing the righteous judgment of God. It's so they knew it. They knew what God's righteousness was and that there was judgment involved. And they knew that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only did they do the same things, but they also approved of those who practiced them. So it wasn't enough that they were doing vile things and going against the righteousness of God. They knew what they were doing against God. They did it themselves. And then they approved of everybody else who did it as well, which that made me very sad. And it made me think of our country today because I feel like we we have people who just approve of all, all sorts of horrible things and encourage other people to do them too. So. Okay. Thank you, John boy. Me and mom, come on up. Where's, oh, there it is. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We have a dear friend that's been be treated very badly. And when I say that, I mean it bad. And it has happened, the people that are supposedly followers of Christ are the ones who are treating this friend so badly. And it just came out of the blue. So before I had learned any of this, I did my assignment because I always do what Tommy tells me, like he said. And um, I was reading um, Romans 1 and I was looking for the word wrath, but I were, uh, read it in the Message Bible so it doesn't use wrath, but it's the same thing. And... Um, this is what I read when I was reading through the assignment. And I'll read that, this to you. Now, this is before I knew anything that had happened to my friend. And I marked this. But God's angry displeasure, which is wrath, erupts as acts of human mistrust and wrongdoing and lying accumulate as people try to put a shroud over truth. Now, after I found out all the things that were going on with my friend, I thought about that. It had, I'd read that that morning and found out that evening. So I read that verse to him and I thought, that's not a coincidence. The Lord showed me that verse and I marked that verse just for him. I want to read it one more time. But God's angry displeasure erupts as acts of human mistrust and wrongdoing and lying accumulate as people try to put a shroud over truth. Okay. Thank you, Minnie Mom. What a woman. She just always does everything I tell her to do. <laughs> okay. Now, I want you to just go back and mentally remember that word that she read about uh Things accumulating, all right? Things accumulating. Let me show you. 
I want to read a couple of things to you and then get the high tech alert ready, John Thomas, because I want to show you a little of te tech that I think illustrates Romans one. Now we're going to we're, next week, Lord willing, uh, we're dealing with the clock now, as you may well know, but next week, Lord willing, we'll go, we'll walk through those verses one more time. And I hope you can, if you haven't done it yet, you can walk through yourself and notice the connections, notice prepositions, nouns, pronouns, all parts of speech. If you're one of those people that in, in English classes learned how to outline sentences, outline those sentences and see if it doesn't uh, uh, help you. I believe it will to follow the argument here and see what you think about uh, how God's wrath expresses itself. But think about accumulation. I want to read to you a couple of things, and then I'm going to show you some high tech stuff. All right. Now, this is from C.S. Lewis's uh, book, Mere Christianity. And here's what uh, Mr. Lewis says. Uh, I want you to uh, to get this. He says, Every time you make a choice, how many times a day do you make a choice? You made a choice to come here tonight. You're making a choice even right now you know, to stick around. We, we, we make choices all the time. But listen to this. Every, every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses into something a little different from what it was before. And taking your life as a whole with all your immeasurable choices all your life long, you are slowly turning this central thing either into a heavenly creature or into a hellish creature. Either into a creature that is in harmony with God and with other creatures and with itself, or else into one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and with its fellow creatures and with itself. To be the one kind of creature is heaven. That is, it is joy and peace and knowledge and power. To be the other means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, impotence, and eternal loneliness. Each of us at each moment is progressing to the one state or the other. Every time you make a choice, it's like a little something in you turns one way or the other. And those choices accumulate. And as they accumulate, you start being turned into something that goes in the directions of the choices that you make. Now, keep that in mind. And let me go back and Lewis and read something that connects to that. He says this. Christianity assures us that every individual human being is going to live forever. Look, you're going to live forever. I'm going to live forever. That's either true or false. I believe it's true. We're going to live forever. Now, there are a good many things which would not be worth bothering about if I were going to live only 70 years, but which I'd better bother about very seriously if I'm going to live forever. Perhaps my bad temper or my jealousy are gradually getting worse. So gradually that the increase in 70 years will not be very noticeable. But it might be absolute hell in a million years. Now think, don't just think about 70 years, think about a million years. He said that kind of temper might be absolute hell in a million years. In fact, if Christianity is true, hell is precisely the correct technical term for what it would be. All right. Now, choosing, turning into something, and letting that choice keep being made for a million years, what does it turn into? Or what does it turn into in 70 years? Now, let me read you one more little comment by Douglas Wilson in a book called Mere Christendom. So we got Mere Christianity and Mere Christendom. Now, here's what Doug says. Right, hang with me now. Are you, are you hanging with me? He says, too many times Christians have placed the consequences of not believing in Jesus too far off in the eschatological distance. The things we say about that placement are quite true as far as it goes. To be admitted into the presence of God, we must be clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And if we are banished from the presence of God on that great day, it will be because we never knew him. 
Now that's looking out in the future. All right. Now listen to this, but not knowing him does not just result in hell later. It also means that when we refuse to acknowledge him here and now, the result is that we start building little prototypes of hell in order to test drive them. And that is why the public square rapidly becomes a haunt for owls and jackals. You see, hell can exist not just way out there in the future, but we can build little prototypes of hell here. And here's what I'm going to say. These little prototypes of hell that pop up in our lives are an expression of the ongoing wrath of God. Now, let me show you how this works. You with me? Same with here, here comes. Tech alert. Tech alert. All right. Here. Can you see my little drawing here? Uh, you can see it from there, can't you? Uh -huh. Is that enough? Now, this is an extremely simple drawing. All right. It, it could be, it could really get really complicated. And uh, when we talk about, but here, here's what I want this to represent. This, uh, well, let me see here. Yeah. Right through here, this line right here. Let's say that this line right here represents uh, your life. All right. Represent your life. And I could put little ticks th down through here and uh, to represent time periods. Like, you know, here's the day you're born. And maybe if we went in the, maybe if we went in five year increments, that'd be five, 10, 15, 20, et cetera. And you'd have your life running on this line right here. Okay. Now, right here at this point here, let's say this would be the day you die. All right. This can either, well, this could either be the day you die or this could be the day the Lord comes back. All right. And so I've got up on uh, um, this way. I've got heaven represented, but heaven is, is uh, heaven's going on right. And everything we associate with heaven, the rule of God, the kingdom of God, the blessed state of people who've gone on to be with the Lord. But then there's an ultimate, there's an ultimate uh, thing coming to you. And you've heard about that new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem, you know, read the last few chapters of the Bible there and get a picture, a glimpse or two of what's coming out there. Same thing with hell. Now there, there is a, there's hellishness going on, going on now, but then there's that ultimate hell to come to that being cast into the lake of fire. And they're both going on. They're both gone. You know, this could be, you could call this eternal life, John three sixteen, the eternal life, or you could call it uh, perishing uh, from John three sixteen eternal punishment, eternal death. And uh, they can go on even in your life. And let me show you how this little choice thing. So, so here you're going in your life and, and say you're moving along and today you make a choice and the choice you make will either move you this way or this way. That's what Mr. Lewis says. Every little choice we make moves us one way or the other. And so say to say you're moving along your life and here, here would be maybe say, this is the choice where you said, I have decided to follow Jesus. You moved in that direction, didn't you? And then maybe you made another decision to continue to follow Jesus. And maybe you went to camp and decided that you were going to be even more dedicated. And then, but then maybe you made some bad choices and it sent you down this way. See what happens? You lose ground because you made bad choices. Now you take this, uh, you're, we're making choices every day and the choices we make are either moving us toward heaven or moving us away from heaven. All right. For a simple reason that choices have consequences. God has connected consequences to all of our choices. And that's why Mr. Lewis says, say that you you are indulging yourself with a bad temper or jealousy or pride or lust or ugliness or lying or manipulation. And maybe, maybe he says, maybe in 70 years, maybe your life's kind of going like this. And he says, maybe in 70 years, that's not real noticeable that you're moving this way. But look, you don't just need to think of 70 years. You need to think of like a million years.
and you keep moving that way, it just gets worse. Look, if you die separated from Christ, you don't think you become more noble, do you? If you if you entered hell, uh, you're going to enter a place that has no love, that has no nobility. Do you think in the outer darkness that you're going to be seeking the light? No, no, there's no light to be sought there. And in a million years, it just gets worse. Now, this goes on. And this is this is the state of being separated from God. And these things begin things begin to happen in your life because you make choices. All right. And when you make a choice down this way, it bears with it a consequence. And this is what Romans 1 is all about. You choose to deny the truth about God. It'll have a consequence in your life. And that consequence will be an expression of God's wrath. You continue to make choices and you will continue to have dire consequences in your life and you can read those consequences of those choices in romans one now i'm not going to list them right now but you you list there's a horrible list at the end of the chapter just all kinds of awful things that happen in a person's life and the reason they're happening in their life is because of unrighteousness the unrighteousness that comes from letting bad things accumulate in your life. The unrighteousness that comes from ignoring the obvious truth about God that he sends you every day. The obvious, the, 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 the thing that comes when your own pride makes you think that you know better than God how to run your life. And so what, how, the way God, in, in a, help me Jesus, in the way God's wrath is going to express itself in your life and we'll go into a little more detail next week. But the way it's going to express itself in your life is God's going to say, well, have it your way. Have it your way. You don't want me? Okay. You want to be away from me? Okay. You want to do things your way? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I will. And the wrath of God is expressed sometimes by God giving you what you want. And you have a picture in Romans 1 of people who say, I don't want God. I want something else. And you get it. Except you get all of the emptiness, the impotence. You get all of the things that happen in your body. All the things that you can't, you can't have your cake and eat it here. See, you got to take the consequences that come with your choices. And taking those consequences is an expression of the current wrath of God that's going to lead one day to the, unless you repent, unless you get forgiven, it's going to lead one day to the ultimate wrath of God, the day in which you will climb into a cave and that's the walls to fall on you to hide you from God's wrath. So God's wrath expresses itself every day when we make these choices that move us in the wrong direction. Because God says, God then say, say you get up in the morning, you say, I'm, I'm going to make a bad choice. Is God going to say, no, I won't let you make a bad choice this morning. No, he'll let you make it. But he'll give you the consequences to go with it too. Are you okay with that? Uh, I mean, you don't have to be okay with it. I just hope you, you're with me on that. Okay, we'll be a little more specific this week and, and carry on from there. And I hope you'll study those verses yourself too. All right? Well, thank you for coming once again. Keep praying for our friends, Joey and Scott. Pray for me. I pray for you. Uh, I, I appreciate you coming so much. God bless you. Have a great week.